So once again, I want to welcome all of you to this session of our lecture on DC motors and uh, DC machines, which we are looking at as part of our electrical machines two course. Okay, so we quickly want to introduce ourselves to the topic as DC motors. And then we'll also look at the principle, how it works, the types, and maybe solve a couple of problems, and then we move forward, okay? So, uh, let's kick start. Most commonly, electric power companies deliver AC power to end users, okay? That's consumers. So one would have asked, why not use AC motors? Okay, so why are you worried about uh, going to get a DC motor, okay? Now, the reason being that no, AC motors are cheaper, okay? easy to maintain. In terms of construction is easy. Uh, maintenance cost is quite low. Okay? So these are some uh, advantages of AC motors. But then the other side is that it has a problem with its speed control. That is basically the speed is almost constant but when you take DC motors you are able to vary the speed okay of DC motors quite easily than the AC motors okay so in short DC motors have better torque speed characteristics than AC motors okay that is in terms of torque in terms of speed this is far far better for you to use DC motor than an AC motor, okay? That's why we are focusing on these DC motors. Okay, so we want to look at the principle, we want to look at types and its applications, okay? Yeah, so, but like I was saying earlier, if you take um, AC motor, okay? The synchronous speed AC motor, is basically 120 okay f over p mm. that is to say that the synchronous speed is given us um 120 20 F all over P okay F is the frequency of the supply and then also P is the number of posts for the motor okay now 120 is the degrees apart this is three phase okay so if you have three phase Basically, it is expected that um, you will have that's kind of a, an angle of say 120 degrees, mm -hmm. 120. Okay, then this is also 120. All right, but so because of that, we have the 120, and then the P is the number of push. If you are going to construct a DC, sorry, an AC motor, must factor in the push. Okay, is it going to be four push, six push, or uh, 12 or 16, depending on what you want? Okay, but as it is, once you've contracted, uh, constructed a motor, um, you cannot really change the speed again speed sorry the, the the pull again it becomes fixed likewise the frequency it also becomes fixed as far as the supply frequency is concerned okay the only time maybe you can vary the frequency okay is when you look for things like uh, variable frequency drives okay so that is maybe vdf 
sorry, VFD, okay? So VFD, so that's, that is going to help you to handle the speed. Okay, so variable frequency. So apart from that, everything remains fixed. Everything remains fixed and you cannot do much. So the speed of an AC motor, okay, so this is AC. AC, 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 is basically almost, 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 almost constant, almost constant. So we see an induction motor as a constant speed motor, okay. So, but this is not the case in DC motor, okay. So when you take, uh, for instance, DC motor, okay, so let's see that we have a DC motor. So, well, DC motor, the speed N, okay, is directly proportional to uh, EB, where EB is nothing but the back EMF, and EB is proportional to um, the flux, okay? So it's inversely proportional to the flux. So this is the flux. Mm -hmm. And this, basically, um, our EB, okay, so let's see. Our EB, mm, EB is equal to Voltage for a typical shunt motor and it's IA RA. Okay, where the uh, IA is the armature current and then RA the armature resistance. In fact, all this is going to be a drop. Current and voltage is, is actually a drop, you understand. Okay, so um, if you say the speed n now becomes um, equal to maybe some constant we call it k all right eb over flux it simply means that if we are going to vary the speed then we must factor in the voltage we must factor in the amateur current we must factor in the amateur resistance. And like we are saying, if it is directly proportional to this EB, what it means therefore is that if you vary voltage, the speed will also vary. So if you increase voltage, the speed will also increase, okay? Huh. And because this is a drop, if we find a way of reducing this drop, it will allow the speed to increase, okay? Then also the flux. Now we are saying that N, okay, let's say N is inversely proportional to the flux, okay? So that if we want the speed to increase, then we have to do something to the flux, okay? I guess you know what we have to do to it. Just make sure that the flux actually reduces. It's an inverse relationship. So, um, if we are going to cause the flux to increase, okay, then so that means maybe flux will have to go up. Okay, if flux goes up, it simply means. Sorry, if the speed goes up, it simply means. Flux must come down, okay, inverse relationship. Flux comes down, so flux will decrease. So if you want flux to decrease, just increase the speed. We also learned earlier that um, our, what do we call it? Magnetic flux is, as far as our motor is concerned, this is machine. We are using electromagnets. We are not using permanent magnet. It means that if you go back to the concept of excitation, okay, what is excitation? I'm sure 
uh, you know the answer. Okay, this excitation is simply we are trying to supply the fuel lining with direct currents. Okay, we want to provide the fuel lining with DC. DC. The purpose of doing that is to create magnetic flash, set up magnetic field. That's why you are providing DC. Okay, your magnetic flash increases when the current in increase, the sighting current. Okay, so if you like the sighting current, um, if a sighting current increases, I exciting. If it increases, then flux setup will also increase. Okay, so if that is going to happen, it simply means that if we also decrease uh, the exciting current, if we decrease it, then flux will also what decrease. Okay. So if we are going to control the speed with the help of the flash, then just make sure that your current okay, reduces. It will reduce the flux in 10. So it will reduce the flux in 10. Okay. So we also learned that from um, Ohm's law, okay, that is to say V is equal to IR. Hmm? V is equal to IR. You can make I the subject by saying V is equal to, sorry, I is equal to V over R, okay? So to cause a change in this current, try to find a way to vary voltage and then vary resistance, okay? Current will be influenced in terms of changing it. And if that happens, it will affect the flux and it will also cause speed to uh, be influenced or change, okay? So, all this put together makes it flexible, okay, to control the speed of DC motor compared to that of, um, if you like, AC or induction motor, okay? So, that is why we are trying to spend some time on DC motor. So quickly, let's go back to the concept of uh, the principle, okay? All right. So DC motor converts electrical power input to mechanical power output, all right? As the motor principle we are looking at, okay? Its operation is based on the principle that when current current conductor is placed in magnetic field, the conductor experiences mechanical force. So the direction of this force is given by Fleming's left hand rule, and its magnitude is given as F is equal to that. Okay, that's B I L, right? So if uh, we come here again, so that we are talking about. The concept that if a current current conductor is placed in magnetic field, okay, it will experience mechanical force. So something like this. Um, maybe I divide my page into two, and then I have something like this, hmm. which may somehow look like. Uh, So I make this one south, I make this one north. Okay. All right. All right, clean it and get it right. This one is based on nice. So okay. If you put a conductor in the air, so let's say this conductor is actually placed in the middle like this. Okay. Now, I 
have I see some lines of lines of what gets through. These are lines of or lines of force. Okay, so do my this. Okay. Okay, so let's just take it like that. So this is basically enough. Flows through this conductor. Okay. And that's um, so that's just um, a good twisting my like time. Some illustration with this. So that's an arrow I'm trying to draw. Okay. Okay, so from here, we will. So there it is, actually flowing. So let's take it like that. So the rational for the uh, so let's just see that this is high current flowing, okay, in the voltage. So also current flowing. Now what happens here is just that when you take this whole thing, you will have some uh, is that you will have flux set up by the field system and then flux also set up because current is flowing through a conductor. So you have two magnetic flux, so maybe I can call it flux one, do this, and then flux, uh, flux two, do the current, okay? Because of that, this conductor that is carrying this current which created magnetic flux. There will be interaction of flux one and then flux two. 
this is flux one. And that will exert a force on the conductor. Because of that, the conductor will seek to respond to that force. That is going to be the movement, the mechanical uh, reaction that will take place. Okay, and that is what we are saying that it is basically giving us F is equal to B I L. And this is a force, so it's measured in what? Newtons. Okay, Newtons. Mm. All right. We know, so B is the flux density, if you like, so magnetic flux density, that is B, okay, which is your flux density. Flux density is giving us flux over area. Flux is measured in Weber. Mm. So we have Weber, an area that is meter squared. So flux density is basically measured at Weber per meter squared. I is the current, okay, so this I is the current. L is the length, length measured in meters, okay? So in all, we'll get newtons, okay? So this is what happens. And because of the armature windings for your DC motor, okay, the armature conductors, you have actually wound a number of uh, conductors to get a whole armature winding assembly. Like we said earlier, that your Z is equal to what? the total number of armature conductors, okay? Huh. So Z is the uh, total number of what? Total number of uh, armature mm -hmm. conductors, which we already know, armature conductors, okay? Conductors. So every conductor within the armature will experience mechanical force. All of force, sorry, all of them will want to put their um, energy together. So a driving torque or a torque, okay, will be produced. Torque T will be produced, and that would actually lead to the whole armature assembly turning. Okay, so that is the concept that we are looking at. Mm -hmm. Now, how does this motor works? Okay, so consider a part of a multipolar DC motor as we have in the figure here. Okay, so this figure is what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. When the terminal of the motor are connected to an external source, okay? It's connected to an external source. Basically, certain things will happen. Hmm? So one, the field winding are excited, okay? And alternate north and south pole magnetic field are established. So once we have done that, the citation will take place then, of course, you create magnetic field, which means that your north and south pole, south pole will be established. Secondly, the amateur conductors carrying currents, okay, so that the amateur currents, okay, will carry currents. All right, so all conductors under the North Pole carry currents in one direction, while those under the South Pole will also carry current in opposite direction. So let's suppose that the conductors under the North Pole, so that we use dots, okay, they are carrying current inward, and then that under the South Pole, we use cross is carrying current outward. So like you can see here, dots inwards, South, we use plus, okay, or cross. Outwards, okay. So, if that is the case, since each amateur conductor is carrying current and is placed in the magnetic field, mechanical force act on it from the diagram above and applying the Fleming's left hand rule, which I'm sure you all know, it's clear that force on each conductor is tending to rotate the amateur in anti clockwise, okay the clockwise direction. So all these forces add up to produce 
a driving torque, that is a twisting force. Okay, so when the conductors move from one side of a brush to the other, the current in that conductor is reversed. Okay, and at the same time, it comes under the influence of the next pole, which is of opposite polarity. As a result, the direction of force on the conductor will remain the same. Okay, so basically, that is how the whole thing works. So quickly, I want us to talk about back EMF. I will answer your questions on this if you have any questions. Okay. And uh, you should channel that to me in my mail or WhatsApp page. Okay. And I will address them. Or um, our next meeting, live online meeting, I will address those questions. So please take notes. So let's look at back or counter EMF. Okay, quickly, let me just explain this. When the armature of DC motor rotates under the influence of driving torque, so the armature is rotating, okay, based on torque produced, the armature conductors move through the magnetic field and hence EMF is induced in them as in a generator. Okay, so that is what is going to happen. So all the armature conductors, because already they are rotating in the vicinity of magnetic field set up in the full system, the uh, amateur conductors will have EMF induced in them, like we had in generator, okay? So the induced EMF acts in opposite direction to the applied voltage, and that is uh, explained by Lenz law, okay? Then we discussed Lenz law previously. So if we look at this, let me just clean this place. So if we look at the um, the generator, okay, like we look at previously, the generator. Previously, we know that our generator, our PG, power generated, is equal to P flux, okay, speed, and then the ammeter conductor is all divided by 60 times the number of power paths. Okay, so that is the case, all right? So like we have, this is true. So maybe I can still write something like this. So this is generated EMF, okay? All right. For generator. So in the DC motor, there will be an induced EMF in the amateur conductor. Because this is a motor, we are not using it as a generator. We refer to that induced EMF as a back EMF because it is going to counter, it's a generated EMF inside the armature of a motor. It is going to counter the supply voltage, which is actually causing current to flow in the armature conductors. It will, it will pose it. For that matter, we normally refer to it as back EMF, which is um, EB, so EB, and it is the same as what we have here, P, phi, okay, and Z, all over 60A. It's the same concept here, okay? So, this, EMF actually opposes the supply voltage. That is to say that your EB will oppose, opposes the supply voltage. Okay, so for that, Voltage. 
maybe we can come here mm. apply voltage okay huh. so that we can do this EB or we can see that V which is the supply voltage is going to be minus EB. The reason being that this EB is going to be lesser than the supply voltage. Okay, if it is greater than the supply voltage then uh, something else will be happening. Okay. So that is what we are looking at at the moment. So this counter EM back EMF is giving us this it's always less than the applied voltage. So although this difference is small when the motor is running under normal conditions, the importance, which is an interesting thing we need to note, of the back EMF makes the DC motor a self-regulating. Okay, so it makes it self-regulating machine. That is to say that it makes the motor draw as much amateur current as is just sufficient to develop the torque required by the load. Okay. So that is what happens. So it makes it self-regulation, the importance of back EMF. Mm -hmm. Okay. So voltage equation of DC motor, so that we can quickly do some few uh, derivation here. So let's define some variables. So V is voltage applied, EB back EMF, RA amateur current, sorry, amateur resistance, then IA for amateur current. Okay. Now, we are making reference to uh, this figure actually. Mm -hmm. This figure, this, uh, yeah. Right. Okay, so I think I made reference to this, 5.9. So figure 5.9i, okay which is this one and this is a shunt motor if you look at it carefully okay all right so what is happening here is that since back emf okay acts in opposition to the applied voltage the net voltage across the amateur circuit is this okay so the amateur current i is given by this whole expression okay so this over this because this time it is okay be equal to this minus this that is to say that your v is equal to what eb plus i a r a so this is a drop i a r a is a drop so this drop actually happens in the amateur add it to the back emf which is taking place in the amateur you would have the total applied voltage. So this is known as the voltage equation of what? DC machine, don't forget, okay? So power equation is what we also have here, okay? So uh, when we multiply the equation, basically this, okay? By mm, IA, okay? What we are actually getting is this. So this time, this is actually power. What it has current, and this is a bit power, okay? And then you have this and this, okay? So the above equation is the power equation of a DC motor, so that you can have this VIA, which is electric power supplied to the armature. Take notes, that is the armature input. Hmm? EBIA, this is power developed by the amateur. Amateur output. Okay? As far as the amateur is concerned, so please take note. I square A, R A is the electric power wasted, underline wasted in the amateur circuit, which is copper loss. See you here is copper. Okay? I ask you. Uh, guys to read on the losses in these DC machines is 
uh, well explained there in the material. So all the losses, copper losses, score losses, and the copper losses, you have series field losses, amateur copper losses, uh, shunt field uh, copper losses. Okay, so we have what we call windage and then um, friction losses. So we talk about mechanical losses and those things, constant and variable losses. All those things, please take your time and go through the material so you can understand them. All right, okay. So quickly, let's look at some types of DC motors. Okay, types of DC motors. I'll be fast on this because we look at types of DC generators. So, um, likewise, generator, you see, there are three types of what? These motors. So, cool. we have shunt wound motor, series wound motor, compound wound motor. So, this is a shunt, okay? Shunt because the field winding is shunting the armature or is connected across it. So, that is what you have here. What actually should inform you that it's a motor is it's taking in supply from external source. So, V, current is flowing in. So, IL, okay, IA coming. I shan't branches that way, catch off current law, okay, that kind of things. And uh, this is the same fluid winding, same current flowing through the armature, okay, from the supply IL, same through the series field winding, same through the armature uh, circuits, IA, and then, so it's a segment, you understand? So that is what is happening here, that is to say that you will have your um I L to be equal to I S C to be equal to I A. For a shunt, okay, this is sorry, series series motor. Hmm? Okay. But when you think that of um shunt, your I Supply, which is IL, is the same as or is equal to the sum of IA plus I shunt. Okay, you should take note of that. And because it's a shunt, so this is shunt, shunt motor. Okay, because it's shunt, um, your I shunt is equal to the voltage supply divided by RA, that is the armature resistance, okay? You can talk about the power developed in the armature, okay? Which we just look at the power equations, all right? All those things, so you can easily look at those things quickly. Um, yeah, so that's it. We can also talk about compound, compound wound motors. So we have short shunt and then long shunt, like we had in generator. The only difference is that direction of flow of energy, current, is coming into the armature. Okay? So obviously, this is what? Short shunt. This is long shunt. We've discussed them already. Okay, so power stages. This, um, we would want to just go through some of these things. Uh, so maybe quickly we can look at this. Power stages, I think we did the same for generators, power stages, stages in generators. This is motor. So electrical power input, you see it's taking power input. So that is V I L is measured in watts. You will encounter some losses, okay? As far as the input is concerned through the conductors before you get to the amateur circuit. So copper losses, to be copper losses, alright? Okay. Now losses will occur in the windings, series as series field windings, shunt field windings, and then when you get into the amateur, amateur uh, copper losses will also be there. So mechanical power developed in the amateur. So this is it. Okay. Then for you to get to the output, you have some iron and then friction losses. Okay. So that will happen here. Then you get to the outputs. Okay. The output power of your motor. Mm -hmm. So A to B, copper losses, B to C, iron and friction losses. So we have efficiency, mechanical efficiency, C, okay. 
then you have A. No, uh, this is mechanical efficiency basically from here to here. So C to B. Mm? C to B. Okay, so you have to correct this. Then electrical efficiency B to A. Okay, B to A. Overall efficiency C to A. Okay, outputs over input. That's efficiency. So we can do a lot of things regarding that. So applications of DC motors. These I want to encourage you to read, please. Just read, okay? And um, we will be dealing with top speed characteristics of these motors. We'll look at the curves and so on. So after that, then you can appreciate why maybe we can use series motors for instance, in uh, maybe cranes or elevators and so on, which are some of these things. And then also you have uh, problems in DC motors or maybe troubles in DC motors. Failure to start sparking at brushes via a vibration and pounding, overheating, okay? All these are, uh, if you like, problems that will work okay. But how do you um, solve these problems, okay? You should also uh, know if the thing is failing to start, what is the cause? It could be ground faults, okay? It could be an open or short circuit, wrong connection. So in your troubleshooting, you should be looking out for those things. You have to maybe measure your supply voltage. Too low supply voltage. Is it up to the specified voltage, okay? Or there's so much load on the motor, so excessive load. So if that is the case, the motor cannot work, you understand? Okay, so take your time and read through some of these things. Mm -hmm. Let's solve maybe one or two problems and then we can pause here for the time being, okay? So uh, let's see what will happen if we want to look at some few problems. Here, our 250 channel for the So our V is equal to what 250. Okay, 50 volts. Mm -hmm. Then um, current. So it takes total current. Also our I. Okay, is basically. 20 amperes, okay. So it's equal to 20 amps, okay. And then the shunt field resistance and amateur resistance are so shunt field resistance. So this simply means we have R S H is equal to 200 ohms. Mm? And then we also have RA, okay, which is the amateur resistance. So RA is equal to 0 0.3 ohms, okay. So what do we want? The total or determined value of what back EMF. So EB, EB. Uh, is equal to what we don't know. Then also cross power. Cross power is the total power in the amateur. So if you like, uh, you basically have uh, EG. Okay, so we can call it EG. Uh, not generated EMF. So EG which is power, okay? Or basically we can uh, refer to it as maybe mechanical power in corrupt, okay? So, uh, let me just say, um, 
akan dah gross mungkin akan bawah di bawah okay so um, maybe uh, make bawah hmm? bawah we don't know we don't know okay so what we know is that the first one we can do some few things to get what we want okay so what do we do okay you are looking for uh, value of back EMF. All right. We know that our uh, V is giving us EB okay, minus IA RA. Okay. That is our V. Mm -hmm. So if that is the case, then we can also have oh, basically no, no, I think uh, we have to look at this again so our um, EB okay, back EMF is the same as V minus IA RA okay. then our V is going to be plus okay, so that's if we are interested in the V, it is the same as what EB plus, okay, EB plus, um, EB, no, 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 plus IA, RA, okay, don't worry about my nice, nice colors. Okay, so that is what is happening, okay, but maybe we just want to focus on uh, the first one because we are asked for what we call it value of back here before okay so we just look at this so what it therefore means is that we have v we have i which is a supply current i supply uh, from the source then ia do we have i we don't have ia so we have to calculate i we have ra okay so the only thing we are looking for here is ia Okay, so IA, IA, okay, is, um, let me do it like this, from, from I equals IA plus uh, IA, uh, wow, IA, IA, I must have to change this. Ink and uh, IA plus ISH. You understand? From this, our IA is equal to I minus ISH. Okay, so we can see uh, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So if it has to be the case then we can look for our IE okay do we have IE we don't but what we know is that we have I uh, I okay we have this mm -hmm. so what it therefore means is that look for I I shan't, I shan't, which is nothing but this is a shunt motor V over R shunt. Okay, V over R shunt. We could have drawn the motor, which is a common thing that we already know, a shunt motor. So the shunt field winding has a resistance, that is the R shunt. Okay. So when you divide the voltage by that, you are going to get whatever you are interested in. So this is going to be 250, okay, divided by, um, 200, okay, so 200. Mm -hmm. And this will lead to getting, we have to punch, so that we'll be able to,
Yeah, so basically that is 1.25. Mm? So 1.2525 amps. Okay. Uh, so maybe I just have to do it uh, to show. Mm. So 1.25 A amperes. Okay. So now that we know this, now that we know this, we can come and subtract it from um, I. Okay. So I A now becomes 20 amps. 20 minus 1.25. And that should give you something. Uh, 18.75. That's right. Mm. Okay, so 18.75 amperes. Mm. Okay, so now we know IA. If you know IA, and we are saying that our EB is V minus IARA. We already have RA, so you now know I. You multiply this is a drop. Okay, so that is what we want to look at. Okay, so 